There's a big media campaign now to say that Russell Brand is a rapist. There was an accusation made. It wasn't made in a court, primarily. It wasn't made through a prosecutor's office, primarily. It was made in newspapers from multiple women who say, back in the day, Russell Brandt raped me, or he was otherwise abusive, or he's a no-down, dirty, rotten guy. And I read the report. It came from the Times. And in it, the, the women say, I, I didn't want to speak out until I was approached by journalists. And then I decided to tell my story. So this really is a media-created thing. Uh, we've got the story here. It's a very long story, very ugly stuff. And some people are going to be tempted to say, I don't believe any of it. Some people are going to be tempted to say, I believe all of it. And what I am tempted to say, not knowing Russell Brand, not having ever watched any of his work, this is not a knock on Russell Brand. Maybe he does really great work. I just haven't seen his stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of good books to read out there, a lot of good movies to see, a lot of good shows to watch. And I'm just not really familiar with his stuff. I I am aware of his existence. I know he is a British actor who dresses kind of funny, but that's all I know about Russell Brand. And so I don't really have a dog in this fight. And my gut tells me in this extremely detailed report, I don't know if he committed any crimes, but I am pretty confident that he did a lot of weird, depraved, very nasty, immoral sex stuff for a long time. And in part, I'm confident of that because... Apparently, Russell Brandt has admitted all of that. He's written about it. He's talked about it before. The, the big Russell Brandt fans were quick to point my attention to that. And so my big takeaway, is Russell Brandt guilty or not? I don't know. I'm all for tightening up lewdness laws and obscenity laws, everything we were talking about at the top of the show. I'm, I'm all for that. You can't do that retroactively. You, you can't have a culture and a law that says, hey, do whatever you want with all sorts of weird sex stuff. And then later on comes back and says, oh, actually, that was bad. So we're going to change the law 20 years later and throw you into prison. So we'll see. Maybe he'll go to trial. Maybe, maybe he'll have a fair trial. Maybe he'll, he'll be convicted or not. I don't know. My main takeaway from this, though, is there is a reason why the elite institutions encourage a lot of weird sex stuff. There is a reason that Hollywood is called Gomorrah by the Sea, okay? There is a reason why there are all sorts of weird orgies and trading sex for jobs and all sorts of weird stuff in Hollywood. There's a reason why there are elite underground sex clubs in every major city in the world, one of which we found out about because of the Hunter Biden investigation. Hunter Biden was apparently a member of one of these in Los Angeles, and it involved a lot of big people, a lot of big politicians, a lot of big movie stars. You remember Dominique Strauss-Kahn, the, the big financial muckety-muck. This was a scandal going back 15 or 20 years ago. And uh, he was accused of some sex crime. And he said, no, I'm not going to orgies. I only went to six or seven of them this year. You know, this thing is pretty pervasive. If you've ever lived in a big city and rubbed shoulders with any muckety-mucks, you know, there's like weird sex stuff is all over the place. I mean, the greatest example is Jeffrey Epstein, where the wealthiest, most powerful, most prominent people on earth were actually going down to a Caribbean island and doing plenty of weird sex stuff. The reason that that happens is not just an accident. It's not just because these people are a little decadent or something. It's, it's a feature of how the elite works because what happens in these elite circles is they encourage you to do all sorts of degrading, immoral, often weird sex stuff. And then 15, 20 years later, if you ever start to question the ruling power, if you ever start to maybe speak out against it, as Russell Brandt has, start questioning some of the narratives. Again, I haven't even watched the stuff. I've just heard that he questions the narratives. He's moved a little bit away from the left. Then they've got you because then what they've got is compromat. Compromat is the, the Russian term, for what the Soviets used to do, which is they'd, they'd get some dirt on you and they'd, they'd hold that over your head and they'd say, toe the party line, or 20 years later, we're going to blackmail you. And it's not going to be about whatever you did. We're the ones who encouraged you to do it. We're the ones who arranged the laws or at very least the social norms. We're the ones who arranged the parties. So we encourage you to do all this stuff. But if you ever turn on us, man, we got it. We got tapes, we got pictures, we got stories. 
in the Times. Right now, go to GenuCell.com slash KnowlesYT. As you might know, we are all big fans of GenuCell over here. But you don't just need to take my word for how great a company it is. Ella from Rockford says, quote, I have both age and acne spots, and this stuff is actually fading both of them. This serum is worth every penny. Ella is raving about the famous dark spot corrector from GenuCell, a must-have after months of record heat and humidity. Sunspots, brown spots, discoloration, even red inflamed patches all disappear in front of your very eyes. Here's the GenuCell amazing guarantee. You will see results on day one or your money back. So take advantage of GenuCell's most popular package, which now includes the dark spot corrector plus the classic GenuCell bags and puffiness treatment and immediate effects all at about 70, 70% off. So you can try the best skincare in the world for yourself completely risk-free. It is simple. Go to GenuCell.com slash YT, letter Y, letter T. Start looking years, even decades younger tomorrow. Say goodbye to dark and liver spots, bags and puffiness under the eyes, crow's feet at GenuCell.com slash YT. That is GenuCell.com slash YT. Speaking of the Brits, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has vowed to ban American pit bulls from the soil of the motherland. The American XL Bully Dog is a danger to our communities, particularly our children. I share the nation's horror at the recent videos we've all seen. Yesterday we saw another suspected XL Bully Dog attack, which has tragically led to a fatality. It's clear this is not about a handful of badly trained dogs. It's a pattern of behaviour and it cannot go on. While owners already have a responsibility to keep their dogs under control, I want to reassure people that we are urgently working on ways to stop these attacks and protect the public. Today I have tasked ministers to bring together police and experts to firstly define the breed of dog behind these attacks with a view to then outlawing it. It is not currently a breed defined in law, so this vital first step must happen fast. We will then ban the breed under the Dangerous Dogs Act and new laws will be in place by the end of the year. These dogs are dangerous. I want to reassure the public that we will take all necessary steps to keep people safe. It's a great idea. I know, look, this is going to be my controversial take of the day. I know it's, I'm, hey, good, good. I'm glad. First of all, I want to borrow this term from the UK because XL bully dog is much funnier than Pitbull. So that's, and the point is correct. The dogs are bred to chew up little infants. That's what they're bred for. It's not about the owner. It's not about they were abused. It's not about, oh, my, I have the greatest pit bull ever. Yeah, maybe you do. But the breed is dangerous. And communities have the right to set standards on safety. They totally have that right. Nowhere in the Constitution, nowhere in Magna Carta, is there enshrined the individual right to have a dog that is responsible for most of the dog attacks every single year. It's not the dog's fault. I don't think we should put the dog on trial. That's the point. The dogs are not rational. The dogs are not conscious. The the dogs are just doing what it is their nature to do. Human beings have instincts and appetites, but we also have a rational will so that we can... uh, deliberate about concepts of abstract justice and then tamp down our bad appetites and say, okay, I really want to maul that little child, that toddler at the park, but I'm not going to do that because I'm rational. Dogs don't have that ability. And so we've got to uh, take measures as a community to stop that or else it will be terrible for everybody. Very, very good stuff on the bully dogs, Rishi. Boy, what a great clip that was. It was good. Well, I, I agree. Now, If you want more of it, you got to ring that bell. Subscribe to The Michael Knowles Show, and we'll see you next time.